Patrick Tuttle, the real estate guy, and this is the third in a series of three videos on what happens after your house gets a contract to sell. And in this video about underwriting, we're going to learn a new golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. Therefore, any items that the mortgage company requests, the buyer has to deliver or they don't get the loan and you lose the sale. Now this doesn't happen very often, but it could happen. Once in underwriting, the lender gathers any additional documentation needed to justify lending money to the buyer to buy your home. This additional documentation can include a paycheck stub, updated bank accounts, retirement account statements, canceled checks. The list is almost endless because the lender can request pretty much anything they want. And depending on what the lender finds, the file can either be rejected or approved. If it's rejected, your house goes back on the market because the buyer can't get the loan necessary to purchase your property. Now during the underwriting process, the seller, you, will most likely be packing and getting ready to move. You'll be trusting that the buyer will get their loan to purchase the property and that the appraisal will be satisfactory. Now occasionally, sellers agree to a seller's temporary lease after closing to ensure that the sale is completed. Alternatively, buyers sometimes request a buyer's temporary lease so that they can move in prior to closing. And both of these scenarios are usually negotiated with the offer to purchase. There's benefits and pitfalls to both, and I won't give a detailed discussion here, so let's get back to the underwriting. Now, if the file is approved, it's then moved from the underwriting department to the closing department, which reviews all the documentation that the underwriting department gathered, and sometimes they request additional documentation. Once all underwriting and closing conditions have been met, we'll receive something called a clear to close, and this is the news you want because the lender will be sending closing instructions to the closer at the title company. Now once the closer receives the instructions, she will prepare the preliminary HUD settlement statement. This will include all of the lender's fees, prorated taxes, commissions, and any bills that might need to get paid on either the buyer side or on the seller side of the transaction. The preliminary HUD settlement statement is sent back to the lender for review and then once it's been approved, the lender will send the full packet to the closer and we can schedule the closing. Now the buyer is most likely going to want to verify that any agreed repairs have been completed satisfactorily. If there were no repairs, the buyer's still probably going to want to do a final walkthrough just to make sure that no damage was done during move out. And assuming that the buyer approves of the condition of, of the property, we are off to closing. Now there's no particular order as to who closes first. It's just a magic matter of scheduling. And once the closing's been scheduled for you and the buyer, the closer will gather the necessary signatures from both parties and then balance the transaction. Once these funds have been received, the sale has been funded, and once the sale is funded, I will call you to remind you to cancel your utilities and your homeowner's insurance. And this is when I will tell you, congratulations, the sale is funded, and you no longer own the home. So if you've got questions about any of this information and how it affects your home sale, call me. I'm Patrick Tuttle, the real estate guy, and you can reach me at 915 231-9994 or online at patrick at patricktuttle.com. Thanks for watching and make it a great day. Bye-bye.